signal to the bench that he wanted to come off it was it was clear to see that he was struggling but perhaps struggling not as much as we thought he would as Candice Carroll jostles with one of the league's in four men in Marcus Dingana and here come Lofthouse, Lofthouse shoots towards goal and it's not far away did Chris Hay get a touch to that? Yes he did referee gives Gateshead a corner so the first corner of the game Absolutely, but they're going to have to do a lot better at the set pieces than they have done in the last two or three games they've not really troubled the opposition ball floated into the back post oh. headed, oh and it's off the line as the ball bounces around is eventually cleared by Gateshead, he's got a short option though as well with Worm who I'm not sure he's going to use, he's not plays it back out to Francis the central midfielder Worm with his back towards goal brings Oli on into play almost hugging the right touch line into Worm creeps into the box and just tries to find Lofthouse Lofthouse goes down under the challenge of Reese Fleet the gate said fans and players want a penalty the referee's not having any of it Lofthouse still on the floor the referee's just going over to talk to him it looked here it looked here as though he did get the ball Gateshead can't quite clear their lines and Pierre Fonk who's invited to intercept the ball. Down on the left-hand side now for City. Coyle finds Alfie Potter who darts into the centre of the field but it's really good defending from Greg Olley who sticks a foot in the way of Alfie Potter and makes what looked like a rather simple interception in the end. Again, what a fantastic start we've had to this game. Down over in the right hand side again Gateshead coming quickly and Dingan is in one on one with Haig here massive chance chips Haig but gets it completely wrong with his left foot really should have been doing better there Marcus Din Dinagana yeah. yeah I've got to say I've just had the attendance actually 787 inside the Royal Charging Stadium today and 51 away fans wow, which is really really good. really good from Gateshead corner to Gateshead then and uh, ball into the penalty area and City struggling to clear it and it's in the back of the net and Gateshead have taken the lead. A bit of a scramble from the corner. And City failed to uh, clear their lines. And it is that man, Marcus Denanga, who's looked a real handful so far in this first half. And he's fired Gateshead in front. Oxford City nil, Gateshead one. Yeah, the ball across the uh, goal was hit with such fur furiosity. It just hit a, a player. And that's all he really needed to do, because as soon as it does that, Players body shapes are here, there and everywhere. No. Yeah, being kept quiet by uh, Fleet particularly and Potter who's closed him down on every occasion that he's had the chance to. Richardson though, who's also been hugely impressive in this first half. And good ball through to Dinanga. Dinanga one on one with the keeper, but it's gone offside. in the net, but it's offside. So it was a quite good vision from uh, Richardson, but uh, Dinanga. Come on. Well, I just saw the uh, his shirt being readied, and actually, so I think he may well be the change. It looks uh, looks to me like he's taking his high vis off, so he will likely be the first change. And I'm wondering whether it will be Pierre Fonku uh, that comes off. I'm not sure that uh, he's uh, he's looking a bit out of sorts. Perhaps it will be a bright bright change for Ross Jenkins. I think if we saw anything, that our mark change against Hartlepool but I'll, I'll pause myself as here comes Gateshead down the right hand side Lofthouse is on here Lofthouse across goal tap in for Dinanga and that's as easy as you like for Gateshead 2-0 and it was almost too simple in the end as the ball was played down the right hand side to Lofthouse just lifted his head up found Dinanga unmarked in the six yard box played it across to him and it was a simple tap in for the striker who scored his 11th goal of the season already and Gates said go 2-0 up at the Raw Charging Stadium. Yeah, it was a well-worked move, wasn't it? But they almost walks it into the net, actually. Uh, Carroll, just frustrated that there's no options on here. I think they have gone to a back four. Lewis Coyle left back, Canis Carroll and Lewis Mitchell are the centre-halves, and Andre Burley moving out to the right as a right back. Potter, just shoulders off his man, he's one-on-one -on -one here. Alvi Potter, good save from Archie Mayer. Yeah, I haven't seen quite as many games as you this season, Andy, but I would completely agree with you that Gateshead, for me, have been the best uh, side that I've seen so far. Certainly their passing movement, and there's a chance here for the former Austrian Bundesliga player, under-18, under-19 Austrian international. And uh, he's got uh, a bit of time, and that's a terrible mistake and mess in the back. What on earth happened there? The ball was should have been dealt with and and Greg Ollie just tapped in a terrible mistake Andy and uh, it's now 3-0
Well, the next goal would have been absolutely massive, and that was a catalogue of errors. They've done that so well all evening, Gateshead. Just press their men, and they just... City are trying to do the same. They're trying to play it out. They always have done, but the angles weren't expansive enough, and Gateshead have made them pay. Fantastic pressing from them yeah, to, not... to force the error, but again, it is an error. It was, oh, it was, it was from... Usually they come from Oxford City mistakes. That one more obvious than others but they just haven't got going today City and, and Gateshead have they've made the journey and, and they are able to, to step it up a gear for, for after stepping off the coach after how many hours and yeah. they, they really do deserve to be ahead ball giving away again and uh, <laughs> they hit Eastleigh for six a couple of weeks ago and you can see why because there's another chance now for Gateshead and it's pinged around the passer and uh, this time it's a free kick against Stephen Wern. But yeah. when Oli Sanderson was just breaking then a moment ago, Rennie Smith was the man and he made a really good angle, Smith. But he just dropped his head when Oli Sanderson raised his. And Sanderson was about to pick him out, but Smith just kept running. And there was no real need to do that. Just stay alert, see where the ball is. And he would have picked the ball up and continued that counter attack. Um, Smith is very much a work in progress, of course. You know, he's just like minutes before the game. So I'll let him off with that one. Gateshead in the uh, ascendancy again, and it's with Hannon into the penalty area. Gets himself onto the right foot, and it's hit the post, the far post, and it's curled away. But this time, Williams Bashal comes away with the with the ball and tries to thread Josh Parker through, and Parker will chase this one down and get the ball and look to get into the penalty area. He's got the the, the substitute Rennie Smith in there, but he opts to go back to Coyle. Coyle into Nia Kirby. Kirby shape for a shot from distance and a beaten away from the goalkeeper and a sort of follow up just to get in front of his man Mitchell win the header and put him off really because that was going to be a tap in if he didn't and then again for Kirby to throw himself in the front of that it's with Hammond uh, on this uh, finds uh, Ollie on this left touchline Oli curls an effort towards goal and control. Yeah, they do have a bit of a funny bounce. It does take uh, players uh, some time to get used to how the pitch plays because it can swerve and veer off the ball in different directions sometimes. And uh, yeah, so it's not quite a bobble. The pitch is immaculate in that sort of sense. But uh, yeah, maybe a sort of deviation. <laughs> the 55 Gateshead fans will. Uh, make the long journey back up the uh, M1 and the A1M very very happy after this performance and so they should Hunter does a little 1-2 with Ollie back to Hunter Hunter gets the ball across to the substitute Connor McBride and it's as easy as you like more really good passing and Connor McBride has drilled the ball into the bottom corner and it's Oxford City nil Gateshead 4 like we were saying before Difficult night for Oxford City, but Gateshead have been on form this evening. And again, when they get to that final third, they're playing the ball around the City defenders quickly uh, and, and easily. And just a few moments, as I was saying, uh, saying to you, Kieran, if they did get a fourth, I don't necessarily think there could be too many complaints. I don't, I, think, I they don't think they can. No, be. I don't think they can. Easily the best side I've seen at this ground this season. City will come away with it and the referee will blow the full-time whistle. And it's been a really tough, tough evening here at the Raw Charging Stadium. Back-to-back 4-0 -back defeats for Oxford City. And they have uh, another tough, tough test on Saturday when... Ultra